The inhale Kirby side is one of the most well-known gimmicks even among casual players. And I mean, it can work. You might just think this is something exclusive to beginners and would never work against a decent opponent, but you'd be wrong. As a mix-up, this can net you a stock at zero, especially if you get the footstool, which I'll go over later, and it can be a great way to make a huge comeback and also demoralize your opponent in the process. But keep in mind, anytime you try this, you are at risk of getting reverse edge guarded or just not having your opponent mash at all, and you both lose a stock. If you suspect that's the case, you can shoot them out with the grab button. In a last stock scenario, your opponent will win since you will lose your stock first, but there are some scenarios where they pop out and you're both stuck in the grab release animation, and as you hit the blast zone, it'll result in a sudden death against some characters, but we can ignore that. Basically, if you can't afford to potentially lose a stock, a Kirby side is probably not your best bet. Also, certain characters are able to footstool you instead of you getting the footstool on them, so that's another thing to look out for. Now, how do you use this effectively? Of course, you can just kind of stall on the ledge, drop down, jump up, inhale, and repeat. You lose your invincibility once you re-grab the ledge, so the counterplay isn't that difficult for most characters, but you can mix it up with your up B since it can reach pretty far across the ledge on its way up. Sure, it's a pretty lame way to play, and there is very simple counterplay, but it is an option. The best time to use this from ledge is if you've conditioned your opponent to shield, like maybe you've done some forward airs from the ledge or a getup attack, your opponent may be shielding not thinking they're in danger. Or maybe they just threw out an attack trying to read a getup option and you can punish him for that. You can also sort of ledge trap with it if spaced right or done from a jump. You can also catch a re-grab or just B-reverse it while jumping off stage and catch someone holding a ledge or maybe even catch a couple getup options. Another way you can use this is to catch a jump off stage. I will often do something like a forward air and try and catch my opponent jumping right after. It's generally better to do this when your opponent is at a lower percent because at higher percents you probably should just regularly edge guard or just ledge trap. Now ideally you want to get this when you're off stage to give your opponent the least amount of time to get an early mash out, but you can get it on stage and walk off if you're close enough. If you're too far away, your opponent can just mash out, so you may as well just swallow them to get their power if you're too far away from the ledge. Now this can be used to sort of edge guard as well, especially against a character with a very linear recovery. You can just run off or maybe even be reverse and wait for them to use their up B. And this is great on a stage like Kalos where the walls limit their options. Of course, there are many ways to combo into inhale on stage. I'll leave the Google Doc that the Kirby Discord made in the description that goes pretty in-depth on the setups, but basically you have your strong and weak up tilt, falling nair, falling up air, the first hit of forward air, and a down tilt trip. So sure, you can just stand on the edge of the stage and hold inhale, but a lot of moves will just beat it out when spaced right. An opponent with a projectile can abuse the end lag Kirby gets from swallowing it, you're honestly better off just spamming down tilt near the ledge hoping for a trip rather than just holding inhale. If your opponent mashes out decently quickly, most characters can just recover normally unless they miss input from their mashing. So this is where the footstool comes in. Once your opponent mashes out, you both go through sort of a grab release animation. During this animation, you are able to drift a decent amount left and right. Neither character has any frame advantage, but certain characters end up higher or lower compared to Kirby. The higher character, if positioned correctly, can footstool the other when buffered. Here is an updated version I made of Resign's chart, the data was found by SK. Basically, green means you end up above your opponent and can footstool them, red means they end up above you and can footstool you. Generally, the smaller and floatier characters it doesn't work on, but there are some others too. A lot of characters won't be able to recover, especially when losing their jump, depending on how low they are after you footstool them. Or at the very least, they'll be sent into a pretty awkward spot where you should be able to get an edge guard. Now to get the footstool out of the grab release animation, you need to be right above your opponent. Sometimes they will pop up right underneath you, and as long as you're mashing jump, it should be buffered and you should be good to go. If they're holding a direction during the grab release animation and you didn't follow them, you will not get the footstool. 
Now it's not possible to react to where they're holding, but you can predict and go from there. And if you're on a stage with walls, it does limit your opponent's options of where they end up. But just because you didn't get the initial buff for Footstool doesn't mean you won't be able to get one. What I often do is get it on the second jump. How I do this is by keeping an eye on my opponent. In the freefall, start mashing jump. All you need to do now is follow where your opponent ends up. If they're on the left, hold left, right, hold right, all while mashing jump. It's surprisingly effective and very easy. If you're against a character that will footstool you, do not mash jump, just drift away from them, and then once you're safe, then start jumping. And you obviously want to avoid getting caught in a recovery. If you want to sort of get a feel for it in general, go into training against a level 7 CPU Little Mac. I find level 9s mash out too quickly for my liking. Because Little Mac's jumps are so low, you will always end up above Mac after your jump. So even if you don't get that initial footstool, you will get the second footstool most of the time, as long as you're following where they ended up. Something to keep in mind is that even though a character may initially pop out below Kirby, if their double jump is faster and higher than Kirby's, they will often be in a position to get a footstool on you, so the chart from earlier only applies to the initial grab release. Once you practice and lab it out a little bit, you should have a decent feel for it, and you'll figure out which characters it works better or worse on. Even if you don't get the footstool at all, oftentimes the risk-reward will be worth it. Part of the reason is because the more you do this, the more comfortable you will be in these type of situations. Your opponent has probably been in these type of scenarios way less than you, so they're more likely to make a mistake than you are. They're also the ones mashing buttons to try and get out. Sure, you will probably lose some stocks from these, but I find I am much more likely to get something like an up B spike on my opponent than they are to edgeguard me, so it's definitely worth playing around with at the very least. I see many people say that good players would never lose to this, but that's completely wrong. I landed this in an in-person tournament against a top 5 player at the time. I mean, I still got 2 0'd, but I definitely proved a point. Hopefully this video helped and cleared some things up for you. Thank you to my supporters on Patreon. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thank you for watching. Peace.